Today I'm going to teach you everything I know about Gwent content creation, or at least a lot of the important things and also some things I just want to point out to the community that they're missing. I want to start here. This is showing you a lot of data about the videos behind the scenes. While it did choose to ultimately delete the estimated revenue, I've never, I can tell you straight up, I've never surpassed 10 figures despite running this. 10 figures? Well, not 10 figures. I've never surpassed $10,000 total on this channel. Uh, I'm actually not even close. If you want to get a rough estimate, this is rated from high to low. So the most I've ever made on a single Gwent video ever was 70 bucks, right? And you can go down and down. And these are the top 50 rinse and repeat. Awesome. So why don't we go ahead and talk a little bit about why we're here. I knew the money thing would be distracting, so I wanted to start there. And a friendly reminder, this is just for Gwent content creation. This won't interest most of you, and I understand that. The first thing I want to teach you is a little bit about how YouTube growth works. It's actually not a linear line. You might be tempted to kind of draw like a little bell curve here. You can see even when I stop putting videos on. But I wouldn't look at that. It's more of a stair step. You start going, start going, and then you get your boost up, right? Things start going okay. And then you kind of stagnate there and then up oh, another step. And usually when you take a step, you fall back a little bit. So like this little down is pretty natural, right? Sometimes you start dropping back to where you were previously. Sometimes you're able to retain it. Now the system kind of starts to figure out, hey, your content's all right. Maybe we'll give you another shot. And then when you hit on something, you're able to follow it up and keep going. You start to explode. Along the way, there are ups and downs. And don't worry about it too much. And then eventually you hit what I hit, which is around here, which is what I would call the ceiling. The period at the end of 2021, even in mid-2021, this period, I was putting out two videos a day, and I had the most views out of every single Gwent YouTube, at least compared to them. So during that period, I was doing quite well, and growth was off the chart. Eventually, I had to dial it back just for sanity's sake, and that slowed me down a little bit. But honestly, the fact that at one point I was the number one Gwent YouTuber just on views, flattering, flattering, guys. Yes, I got there by putting two videos a day, but I did like two videos a day for two months, three months. That felt really good. Somewhere in here. Cool. Uh, so the first thing I want you to understand is that this is a stair step. It goes up, up, and up. Not easy. Wish you nothing but the best if you pursue it. And it is one of those things that you're always kind of like running on a treadmill. You're running on a treadmill until all of a sudden it kicks into a higher speed. Then you're running on a faster speed, kicks into a higher speed. It just isn't linear. It's hard to grasp. Cool. Enough repeating myself about that. Why don't we go ahead and move on to a couple of the other things I wanted to share. Easiest way to make thumbnails for people who don't know how to make thumbnails. You can use Photoshop, but also Adobe Spark exists. It's literally just a thumbnail maker. It lets you put some text, some pictures, put them next, in, uh, next to each other. You combine that by getting the pictures off of Gwent.1. And all of a sudden, beautiful thumbnails are super easy to make. Don't stress it. Next thing to teach you. This is keywords. This is vid IQ. I just want to let you guys know you suck at keywords. Yes, you. Who's you? Every content creator. You guys are terrible. I don't get how none of you have figured out how keywords work. It's actually physically breaking my heart. Let me explain keywords. First things first, vid IQ is like five bucks a month. It's fantastic. It ranks different keywords, it tells you how good they are. Uh, it's fascinating. Gwent is one of the best keywords out there. It's really low competition for the high search volume. If you want to get into content creation in general, Gwent is a great way into it. All card games are typically pretty good. I imagine if I were to do like Legends of Ruterra, let's find that. I haven't tried this. We're just going to wing it. I bet it's pretty good. 63, not too bad. Why? Because card games have a monetary barrier to entry. So like if I do Hearthstone, 79, the more expensive a game is to play, but it is fun to watch just like Hearthstone, Gwent's not too bad. Like the more likely you are to be able to make content for it. If I do like, uh, let's try League of Legends, free to play MOBA, terrible. Why? Tons of people love it. Actually, more people are able to play it because it's free to play, but everyone can play it. And for content creation, it's actually a really bad thing. It's a lot better when you have games that actually block out a lot of players by being really expensive, frustratingly level or, or, or achieving a frustrating level of expensiveness. It's no surprise Hearthstone does so well. If you are interested in video game creation in general and you have a pretty beefed out Gwent account, especially if you played during closed beta, you got a ton of scraps at the end of it when it began transitioning out, then beautiful. You're going to do great. Uh, and you can already get a head start on everybody else. Sweet. Excellent. Let's talk about the future of Gwent. 
Gwent is actually a dead game. It died back in 2018. Homecoming quite literally murdered it. This is the average monthly viewers on Gwent. Now you might be saying, and I've heard it from people who don't really get how proxies work, but that's okay. Uh, people are like, John, not everybody, not everybody who views the game on Twitch plays it. Like the, the base is different, but that hasn't really changed now, has it? Like, let's say 10 viewers, uh, let's say 10% of viewers watch on Twitch, unless something dramatically changes and maybe homecoming would be the, a potential but unless something dramatically changes in the player base where Gwent becomes more or less viewable it'll still be an approximation right i could say okay um but basically the same probability a player is going to watch twitch in 2017 probably the same amount or same percentage chance a player will watch in 2018 19 20 2021 short story is blah it's blah you don't have to believe me here. I, it's mostly a stagnant game. Now, I will say, for the record, I don't know if it's Thor Serpent or um, any of the other prior, uh, Jason or any of the other prior people who actually patch the game. These patches are getting better. This is the correct type of patch. If, the, if Gwent keeps reworking archetypes in this complexity, then they will be returning to what made this great. Where, in home, uh, where prior to Homecoming, it was a wacky game. Your bronze cards did awesome stuff. Things were flying. And then things like Scorch and Igni would come down. And there wouldn't be a lot of choices. No cards would be flying. But that moment, that impact, it would be like things burn. Boom, the game has changed. Oh, it was so good. I remember playing Woodland Spirit. And then the other show, for, uh, Rogue gets fogs. And tons of foglets come out of my deck. Oh, so fun. These kinds of patches we're seeing are actually correct. This is what it needs. But I'm I'm sad that Cyberpunk did badly because CDBR is probably a little more cash strapped. And I look at that and saying, wow, like are you gonna put uh are you gonna put more resources in the Gwent, which is kind of stagnant, or are you going to just move on? I I am optimistic about the quality of the game. I'm not optimistic about the game's future. They they're doing the correct things with the reworks here and there. They're beautiful. All the cards are getting significantly cooler. Wild Hunt Warrior doesn't it deals do damage and now if you have dominance you get frost that's so much cooler than dealing more damage for the record you get things like um replaying bronze units stick as heck i love it i love it i wish this had three choices uh where you didn't have to necessarily oh actually no never mind i take that back uh actually i do wish it was three i wish it was four on one row two replay or two on both i just i like little things like that oh oh so good so good and you got the Winter Queen. You got the Winter Queen. Oh, it's such a sick archetype. Uh, I actually haven't played Gwent since then, but like I just reading it, it just gets me excited. It's interesting. It's fun. Every card in Gwent thrives if there's a level of complexity to it. Because I think the simplicity of other games is almost a downside. Like if Gwent, you only have 25 cards in your deck. By learning them all and knowing what they do, being able to do cool stuff, oh, it's awesome. I love the design direction right now. Except alumni uh, and Vi. Those two, alumni, make alumni gold and rework Vi. You'll be good. Both those designs currently. A bronze alumni design, terrible. Gold, really good. Bronze, terrible. Because uh, you can lose around, or you can lose in round one. Especially coming from the person who played Leticia, Arch Griffin, alumni. Using all inning early on to make 40 point alumni and a 200, 300 point Arch Griffin. Like, come on, Leticia, really? Really? I'm glad Leticia went, but. Alumni should be gold by now, and Vi's ability is bad. It's fundamentally bad. There's no interaction. It's a, it's a terrible way to play the game. It's supposed to be not solitaire. Anyways, points aside, uh, Gwent's future in the short term actually looks pretty decent in terms of just it's still available for people to get into the content creation space and have a good time, and the game should get better from here on out. They, I think they are get, at CDPR are getting better at patching it. I'm not optimistic long term. It feels like it's almost like a little too late. Thanks, Homecoming. And I know I get the idea of homecoming making it fit on phones, but still, mm, hurts, hurts, man, hurts. Cool. What do I have next to call out? Oh, keywords, guys, keywords. So vidIQ lets you look at keywords. Um, you can look at Gwen. You can look up Gwen Deck, the next most popular term. Uh, Gwen Deck is eight thousand on a competition of twelve. Twelve is very low, so it's it's a good one. It's a good one. Let me explain that everybody here sucks at sucks at keywords. You can actually find the keywords about the vidIQ software if you just right click and use inspect page or inspect in Firefox. You don't get all the cool stuff on the right telling you about keywords and competition, but you get cool stuff. Let me explain to you something about the Gwent community. You guys all suck at the Gwent content community. I'm calling you guys out in particular. 
Uh, you, you're all terrible at keywords. Look, here's how keywords work. These are what you're trying to tell the system to search. I'm trying to tell YouTube that when these terms are searched, your video could be a good fit. I can tell you, Bessie, I'm calling you out. I've messaged you about this before. Uh, nobody is searching the word the or guide or card and wants to see this video. Zero. None. Uh, in this mix here, Gwent deck, absolutely. What a great search. People looking for Gwent decks or Gwent deck will probably want to see these semifinals because you get to see top decks played, especially if in the description were, say, the deck list for it. That'd be sick, right? Gwent the Witcher deck. I didn't, I've never even seen anyone put that one before. Or the, or the Witcher card game. Perfect for this video, right? Really good. Uh, Chris, uh, Q Sento, who strikes me as somebody who absolutely would watch this. By the way, so glad to see your content. I feel like your content, you, if I recall, you the person who made the Alba Spearman Pikeman deck. Uh, yeah, every time I see that, I believe it was you, based on what chat said. And if it was you, I would like to tell you that every time I see it, pl I play against it. Every time I see it, and I've seen it a lot and played against it a lot, I always think there and say, darn it. I should have been the one to think of that deck. So well done there. You do a better job here, by the way. I just wanted to call you out in particular because you're doing this dirty thing of putting in people's usernames to try to snipe their views. Like, there's Plain Talk John. Really? That's why I know you're going to see this. Plain Talk John, you're trying to snipe my views when somebody searches Plain Talk John. And Specimen Gwent, you have Trinet, uh, Spiro ZA. And you want to have to say about that dirty behavior? I tried it. It really doesn't actually work because the, game, the YouTube algo is really good. It has figured out that you can't put Specimen Gwent in your... Uh, in the tags and it won't just put it under specimen gwent i did try i do think for you quesento what i would do you could go and take specimen gwent you could take one of my old decks and say playing trying old school plain talk john's viper deck and then if you put plain talk john and plain talk john viper boom it's all yours i think the system will let you do it i never got around to doing it i was all about the gwent content creation and just creating up new decks but i bet you could snipe specie's decks my decks spiro's decks uh tia's decks or dia beastie as many people call her uh, I bet you can snipe a bunch of people's decks. So what you do is, again, friendly reminder. And anyone can do this, by the way. I'm calling out Quisento in particular because you're playing dirty. And to be honest, I tried it too. Tried it. Didn't, I found that it didn't work. But just put, you have to just find a way to play their decks and put their username in there. Beautiful. Oh, by the way, your first sentence sucks. I'm calling you out, by the way. Uh, what you want, uh, let me just show you before calling you out. I feel like I'm calling out Quisento, you in particular, because you're the closest one to doing it right, not because you're doing it badly. You're doing it a lot better than the rest. Let me show you how it actually works, though. Ah, uh, Viper. Let's go over to my keyword. Oh, look, it's just me. God. Hey, if anybody, you guys, if anyone enters content creation, can somebody please pick up Viper? Let me go ahead and show you how you actually do keywording. Gwen, Gwen deck, <laughs> specimen Gwen, there you are. Hey, one of my experiments. I'm allowed to try. I have 15,000 views on this video. Woo. Woo. You sick degenerates. Uh, you guys, what? You like You like watching that passing is losing? Oh my gosh. That's the one that you guys like? Oh my gosh. You guys are just disgusting. I love you guys too. We're all in the same boat together. Anyways, uh, notice Gwent, Gwent deck, Gwent decks, and then all of mine are on keywords that match up with what's in the title and my first sentence here. The first sentence of all my videos are never really make much sense. I literally just shove in the keywords I want. So I want Viper, Nilfgaard, and Deck, and Gwent, right? Literally, I'm, I'm so uncaring about the first sentence. I'm so focused on keywords. I just capitalize everything. Uh, look right here, Gwent Dex is capitalized. But notice what I'm doing. Viper, 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 Nilfgaard, Viper, Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard, Deck, Viper. Nilfgaard deck, Nilfgaard deck, Viper, Gwent pro Viper. I didn't really use pro. Don't worry about it too much. Oh, actually, use pro rank here. Yeah, right. Pro, pro, Gwent, pro, Viper. Oh, Nil uh, let's see. What's another good one? Viper deck. I didn't really find the way to get deck, but I got really focused on it. You're saying sometimes I'm not able to get Gwent here, but look, I just started using Gwent, hashtag Gwent at the end. I almost did hashtag Gwent deck. Uh, I also found that uh, the usernames, I will uh, not username, but the titles as you build up a brand matter less. I literally started experimenting with what happens if you just put absolute nonsense as your title. I think I did. You've got a viper in your boot. And then what was the other one? I did. I decided just to experiment. What happens if you just didn't care about video, like the video name? Um, I also put, where was it? It was something so dumb. I think it was a mill one. He's... No, no, no. There's another one during that around that period I was trying. But there was a 
Oh, here we go. 8.8,800 views. Mildex are the energy... Mildex are the energy drinks of Gwent. Whatever that means. Yeah, I just want to let you guys know, don't stress about the title too much. Once you build up a brand, people will click it anyways. It was great. You're welcome, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Eight, over Almost 9,000 of you clicked to find out why Mildex are the energy drinks of Gwent. I was almost certainly drinking some kind of energy drink then. The vice of mine. So, let's keep going. This is really fun. I kind of like giving away all my secrets. It's very nice. Ah. I love that I don't have to edit this video because only a hand this is literally made only for a handful of you. And if you're sticking around, you're gonna keep on learning. Let's go criticize. I'm just kidding. We're not gonna criticize, but I do want to call out a couple of different creators, how they approach the business, and then talk a little bit more about the business of content creation. Uh Spessy's right now going through must be referred to in his mind as a golden age. Bushy. Uh we're gonna get to that in a second. Bushy stopped uploading. I've stopped uploading. So right now, Spessy. Spessy's the hot game in town. Now, luckily for the Gwen community. Bessie is a great content creator, a fantastic content creator who has done a lot for the Gwent community. And he is someone who's so determined to be in Gwent and focus on it that he even did an update video, an update video where he's like, I'm going to think about moving to Poland. I'm thinking about moving to Poland. You know how insane that is? I'm in America right now. I don't really want to move to make content creation bills work. I'll be frank. I only want to do it after I make a salary I can thrive in America with. Maybe I'll move and really, really juice my um, income that way. But I'm not in the mood. I'm not in a rush to move anytime soon. But he's like, yeah, I'll move to Poland to make it easier to meet than staying in the UK. I was like, dang, man. Talk about commitment. Especially because he actually had a home run video. YouTube basically told him, for the love of God, please make Runeterra videos. 22,000 views on his first upload on this channel. This used to be an old channel of his for... The Storybook Brawl, if you guys remember. I think he deleted those, decided to upload this. 22,000 views. If we go sort by most popular here, he has only a handful of videos that have surpassed that from a couple months ago apiece. A handful, guys. A handful. And the, he just gets to start off one, boom, home run. Massive home run. It's unbelievable. So why didn't this channel work? Uh, that's a great question, right? This is what I want to teach people. He thought he didn't. He chose to go with Gwent. I don't know if he consciously or unconsciously chose that. I'm going to trust he consciously made a decision. Uh, but I think this is a quick learning learning lesson about how gaming content creation works. Quantity. It is not a quality game. Quality matters much less than quantity. I promise you that. People, people, when it comes to gaming content, they're looking to veg out. They're thirsty for it. So what they want is videos. So after this video. I think this came out a week later, but it really wasn't a lot of content here. If Specimen went, or Specimen, Bessie, in my, in my opinion, if he had gone ahead and kept putting out a video every single day, split his stream in half, went hard for two months, put a video out on this channel every day while putting out a video here, I would, fr I would put a friendly bet that he would make more money from this channel than this one on a monthly basis within two months. If he had taken advantage of this, he could still potentially get there. He, the YouTube algorithm has basically already told him they really like his content to the point where I'm sitting there and I have to just say, hey, uh, why, you know, why did you choose not to do that? I've never asked him, but I imagine it's because he really loves Gwent. I mean, he he very well could someday be in a year the face of Gwent straight up. I usually think of Spiro, but Bessie, Bessie is a true monster and the community is honored to have him. On, I was actually, I remember when I saw him first put out this video, fun little story. When I saw him first put out this video, I remember thinking, God, I really hope he keeps following this up. He's about to have a ton of success. And so I was sitting there and I remember seeing that and he didn't put out a video. I'm like, what are you doing, Spessy? You got to put out a video. Never asked him about it. I remember just seeing that. And can I find it? Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Is it, when, was this two months ago? Give me a second. Give me a second. So I, I was kind of sitting there waiting for it. I was waiting for it over and over. And then there's no way it's not here. Come on. Come on, Spessy. Where are you? I know you did it. I was so irritated. Uh, there was... Oh, hold on. Did he take it down? Did he take it down? There's no way. No, no, no. I'm sorted by not most recent. I'm more and most popular. Anyways, give me a second. Give me a second. I, I don't care. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting for him to upload, and I'm starting to feel really guilty. I want to tell him, go ahead and upload, man. Just start uploading. It'll be really good for you. Uh, and so after, like, it was like five or six days, I'm starting to feel really worried for him. 
Now he might be making the conscious choice, but I really want to like sit down and be like, Spessy, if you if you just sit here and put out a video a day every day after following this up, just do something. Break into the space. You're a great card player. You're gonna do fantastic. Uh, and um, you know, you go and you just crank it out. You're gonna you're gonna be making much more a significant amount of more money off of Runeterra, Legends of Runeterra. It's a much more popular game backed by a company that really wants it to grow. We're going to stagnating. But after six days, he decided to do, do something I've never seen a creator do. Make an entire video mocking my deck. He made fun. He made fun of my deck. He even made fun of it on stream for multiple days. Oh my gosh. And I remember seeing that as like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't give him some advice on how to make this channel a success. Now I don't feel as bad anymore. And to specimen, if you're watching this, I just want to let you know, you can actually revive this channel. You probably just need to do the harder work of uh, putting out a video probably every day for three months instead of just two. Uh, but you can make this work. This channel can be revived if you want it. But if you're focused on Gwent, you're good. You're, doing, you're a peak Gwent right now. You're rocking it. Uh, but yeah, it pissed me off to no end. I didn't respond but, uh, on stream once or twice when people asked me about it. I was, I was, I was annoyed. It's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I thought we all didn't mock each other's decks. I thought it was the forbidden thing. I thought we all just kind of stayed out of each other's way. But no. I had to do a whole video. He even pulled up Veritasium. Yeah, I saw the VOD. He was all like, oh yeah, I'm complaining here. I don't care. I don't care. It's all in good fun. Veritasium clickbait. It was in reaction to a lockdown video I did. He's like, here is why clickbait's so effective and what is good clickbait. But Plain Talk John lockdown. Oh yeah, I get to vent guys. I don't care. This public. Uh, lockdown Nilfgaard is stupid good. He's like, this is complete clickbait. And, bait. and this is John deceiving the people. And there were literally people commenting here. Oh, was I still trying the specimen Gwen stuff? Ha, <laughs> that's amazing. Really? I didn't think I did it that often. Oh, well. Uh, more you know, more you know. Given that we see uh, a little bit of name overlap here that most of these creators have left, I won't feel too bad. Won't feel too bad. Anywho, we see here that he, he basically came in and mocked the heck out of my deck and spent multiple days mocking it. And there were even comments on this YouTube channel saying, John, stop trying to trick people into wasting scraps. But like, look, there are, if you go over to the keyword, this is why I did that. Ready for this? Gwent Lockdown. Lockdown has 4,000 searches a month and 3.8 on competition. No one makes Lockdown decks. It's a really great thing. And I'm pretty sure people know that Lockdown decks are terrible. Uh, and so I didn't exactly think this is clickbait. It completely over overperformed my expectations. It wasn't terrible. The bar was way down here. It's one of the worst leader abilities in the game. But stupidly good, it is. It held up in in the ranked ladder. And I was like, well, stupidly good for lockdown is fair. Is it the most broken thing in the game? No. No, it isn't. Was it perfectly fine to advertise like this yeah it was and people people understand if someone says lockdown is broken they understand it's not broken if somebody says lockdown is the is the most overpowered ability in the game check this out people understand it. it's like probably average lockdown it's very clear that the Gwent user base knows what lockdown is lockdown is i looked back and i was like should i change the title nah Fourteen thousand views by the way i'm just saying i'm just saying also, this would have been a good opportunity, retrospect, for Specimen Gwen's keywords. Put Plain Talk John in here. Could have done better on the keyword. Maybe not overcome. Maybe the order would be the same, but that's the kind of thing you want to look for. Hey, Plain Talk John's here. Put Plain Talk John in the title. And then Plain Talk John in the... Yeah, get the idea. Triple thread it. First sentence, title, tags. Also, friendly reminder, Specimen, and I'm chewing you out a little bit. Uh, all in good fun. Obviously, I still have a ton of respect for you as a creator. Even though you put together this crap video, uh, it, you know, good, all in good fun, all in good fun. <laughs> Moving along. Uh, let's just talk about a couple other things. Uh, Bushy hasn't really been putting out content. I have a lot of respect for Bushy. Bushy plays the game of content creation quite well. Uh, I just wanted to kind of point out his alt channel here, Bushy Games, where he's been uploading things about Elden Rings too. I don't have any comments besides you guys should subscribe to it. Like, go ahead. I don't know. If you're in the content creation intro, if you're this far in the video, I'm not editing this. If you're this far in the video, you should be subscribed to this. This is just awesome. Uh, obviously, this is not my actual per personal account. 
But you should be keeping an eye on this. You should subscribe. Bushy is a really smart content creator. I would love to see if he figures this out and is able to really uh, make it explode because he's been doing crazy no-hit runs in Elden Ring. The only thing I feel bad about is I just don't see more content here, uh, like highlights from them. Moving along. Let's see what else I have here. Oh, Tia, the actual winner of how to make Gwent into a profitable business. So Tia is probably Loki, the person who has the correct model for Gwent in many ways, in any other game. Tia plays part-time. I believe she's still a student. She's written a book she's trying to get published. I have interviewed her before, actually twice now. Both interviews are great. You should check them out. If you guys don't know, I once ran an interview series. Yeah, that's right. Um... I call it behind the streamer, I think is what it was called. Yeah, there's tons. They're great. They are great. And you can see some experimenting with my other channel. But if you go through some of these interviews are godlike. Uh, Tia, Tia wins the secret world of Gwent, where if you've realized by now, it's actually a really low bar to get in. As long as you have the cards, no one else really can play because they don't have all the cards. You just need to upload a quantity of videos and you'll take some time getting used to it. But Tia can pull several hundred viewers, have thousands of views per video. And probably makes a low four-digit, upper three-digit amount of money each month. Probably, I don't know, $700 to $1,300 a month. Maybe less, maybe less. She hasn't been uploading as frequently. Let's say, let's say $500. How about $500 a month? But $500 a month for playing a video game and uploading some footage and live streaming while you're playing? Really not a bad gig. That's just an approximation. Maybe it's less. I know she's in South Africa. And so as a result, maybe you make less per ad on YouTube and such. That There's a whole thing to that. You can go research finance around or how you make money and all the specifics for CPMs and all that on your own time. This is more about content creation. I just wanted to point out that doing part-time content creation for Gwent is really effective. Purple Witcher, right? Let's see. Purple Witcher. Uh, if Purple Witcher started uploading more frequently, I imagine they would also find a lot of success here. Where there's been a couple of uploads here. Here's another person that could easily move into that space in BR, that part time, constantly uploading. And as long as it, there's an upload every three ish days, I think it'll be great. Even if it's once a week, that's not too shabby. You can see that they're already finding some success, a 1,300 view. And then you have a little bit of experimenting with other things. But if you focus just on Gwent, you'll find the fastest growth. YouTube loves focus. That's always been a thing. When you pivot, you lose out on drivers and viewership. Try Net123, when they pivot to Storybook Ball, all of a sudden, you know, viewers left, subscribers left. Uh, pivoting is hard, as well as trying to pivot on an already, already focused channel. But the more you're focused, the faster you'll grow. So, like, pivoting out to uh, the Harry Potter stuff is a little more difficult. If you want to do a lot of Gwen stuff, a Gwen channel and then maybe a Harry Potter channel would be really good. Be easier to grow on both as long as both are getting frequent updates. Awesome. What was my next thing? Oh, guys, audience retention. Guys, look, if you aren't averaging 50% after eight minutes, what are you doing? All I do is I pick the most interesting game at the start and I just shove it there. I just shove it. After about a minute, this is how, how many people are viewing after every second, right? So after a minute, if you are 30 seconds is 65, right? 60, 60% uh, after a minute. If you do a deck tech at the start of your video or some kind of intro graphic and you are not averaging this, cut it out. Put your most interesting, interesting game at the start. Put it right as you're starting to talk. If you don't talk much to the mulligan, cut the mulligan. Just get the interesting stuff. And then do you know what you do? You put the next most interesting game here. Ideally, win here and win here. Wins are more fun. After, so if you can keep somebody from game one to game two, you're almost guaranteed to have them for the whole rest of the video. So 39% of viewers at 1440, and it only is going to drop by the end to 20%, meaning one out of every five people is going to finish it up. That's not a big drop. I lose half after the, well, after the end of game two. But if they stay through game two, it's just like a slow decline. The biggest drop is at the very start. And then that first to second game transition. So make a great first game. Make him go, wow, I want to see more. Second game, get a hook. Make it like, oh, God, this is a really be a really bad matchup. Or dang, I don't know if I can win this one. 
Oh, every one of my videos has the first two games being wins, so you get rewarded for sticking with me and see how I pull myself out of complicated, sticky situations. How do I know they're complicated, sticky, and wild, or really interesting? Because my favorite games go here, whatever I think is most interesting. The rest can be literally whatever you want. Uh, you can also, by the way, tell there is a type of viewer who only skips to the ends of games. I imagine mine are going to be a little more pronounced than other people's, because a lot of my stuff have a bit more meme orienta orientation to them. With that said, I will say that the one video we're on here is just damage engines. We've got some Siege, some Hensalt, Queen Adalia, whatever her name is. Uh, you can see that people, some people just skip to the end. Don't worry about the people. Fantastic. What's next? What is next? Oh, by the way, uh, easy. If I could go back time and set myself a rule. Uh, you see Mill? Mill has, I think, I think Mill is single-handedly single the most popular deck in Gwent. I would release a Mill deck video every two weeks. If I could go back and do it all again, I would tell myself at the beginning, release a mill video every two weeks, change out a card, release the same one. People love mill. There's never enough of it. It quite literally is the thing that you could endlessly eat. It's like celery. Celery is zero calories. Best of my knowledge. I think you can quite literally starve eating celery. There's nothing in it. So the went mill is like a, a ice cream combined of celery. People will, ne will never get enough of it and they'll eat an endless amount of it. Make Gwent Mill videos. Um, next, what else do we have to do? What else to cover? Uh, I think the smartest way to approach Gwent is part-time income. You can get a couple hundred bucks a month playing a game and uploading it. That experience builds skills. You learn how to video edit. You learn thumbnails. You learn YouTube. That's all valuable, and those can be used later on in life as different opportunities appear. Sweet. So you get to make hundreds of dollars a month, plus on top of getting a bunch of awesome skills, running your own business. Yeah, just go do it. Why would you not? Now, John, 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 you're telling me, but what if I want to be full-time? Oh, oh, well, welcome to Team John. And I suspect Team Bushy and Team Specy someday. Maybe Bushy's already making the move. Have not talked to them in a long time. Full disclaimer, everything I've said about them, it's been just me just pointing out things I see. I have no idea what the plan is for either of those people, other than the update videos they put out on occasion. The, the truth is, Gwent isn't going to make enough to make ends meet in most countries. I don't know how far it goes in South Africa with Spiro, but Spiro is kind of also known as Spiro's EA, as many people call him. Uh, but Spiro, I believe, is his actual name from when I interviewed him. Spiro is an exception. You are probably not going to be the face of Gwent, and he currently is the face of Gwent. Congratulations. Uh, so don't sit there and think, hey, wow, I bet I can do this full time. You might not be able to. Uh, Bushy, for example, is living at home. I think he's renting a room from his mom, if I recall. They would have to go back to... Uh, behind the streamer episode three, where I interviewed Bushy, but he, you know, he found a way to make ends meet, and obviously, but uh, for Spessy, he has to move, and I live in my one bedroom apartment that I rent at full price, so yeah, I have to make choices myself. It's hard, however, Gwent is a great way to get into content creation. It's a great way to experiment. It has a really low bar. Competition for Gwent is not that high, so you can really get going. It's a great place to get going, started, and try things. Remember, quantity is king. Quantity is king. Fantastic. So what would I want to tell you all about? Remember that if you start with Gwent, but you want to get into content creation, you have to start eventually getting used to trying other games. It's not a bad place to go. If you want part-time income, very, very doable. I did want to call out something I've been keeping. Not really a secret. I put out an interview and then none of you guys watched it. I think I actually lost subscribers from this interview. Not to the fault of the person who I interviewed. But uh, fault of a lame, lame person, whoever unsubscribed. They're not here anymore. You see this interview here? I literally tell, told you guys how to get into esports casting as a hobby. Do you know how hard it is to get into esports casting? And one Christo did it as a hobby? I even interviewed Watchflake. Inside Gwent is a secret way into the world of... Into the world of... do 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 uh, esports casting. You go from Gwent, you expand to other games, you put together a channel just dedicated to you casting games. You go ahead, you can ask people for their VODs, you can get some VODs from Spiro or other people in the community, or just record their stream, download their VODs, and it doesn't matter. Ha or cast over their footage of their gameplay. It doesn't, like, it's all so easy. Put together a channel, get into the qualifiers. The bar is high because, honestly, the Gwent community from Tia, the Lionheart, the Spessy, the Spiro... And many others are literally just watch like, oh my god, one Christo? 
amazing. Uh, there's there's just a bunch here of ultra intelligent uh, and wonderful casters, but there are ways in, especially for the qualifiers. And I don't think uh, CDBR would mind stirring it up because if Tia, Lionheart, Watchflake, One Cristo, Spira, or Speci leaves, they're kind of a huge hole to fill. Uh, Shinmarie, and many others. So just getting yourself in there. Start becoming, making content, getting excited. There's already one small esports organization that some of you have heard of. Uh, I won't, eh, I mean, I might as well plug their stuff. I mean, they can't, they can't be at me, angry at me for plugging it. Um, Tiny Three Studios. Our media, pardon me. Oops, awkward. Well, I'm plugging their stuff. I don't, I don't think they'll be sad. Uh, 93 Media has a hand within the card game, diff different smaller card game scenes. They do a great job. From what I can tell, really nice guys. I participated in like a tournament with them of content, or a tournament that later ultimately got canceled after like four months with them talking about, or not with them. I competed with them playing Gwent on stream. It was fun. It was there was a Gwent tournament I participated with, but they they are in the scene. So there's like little ways into the world uh, of esports casting. And what you then do is you cast the esports. You can even host your own tournaments. Like, uh, you know, I've hosted meme tournaments. Right now we have that right there. I hope that comes together. Low key. I might be short a person to help me run it, which would actually throw engine things. We'll see how it goes. But that's unavoidable. Things happen. Life happens. So be it. We'll see how this comes together. We have three days. I'm either going to make everybody super disappointed with me, or it's going to run and it'll go swimmingly and everyone will remember me fondly, or it'll crash and burn, which I think is the absolute worst. I'd rather cancel and not waste everybody's time and let them reschedule their weekend, even if it takes more hate. But it beats the worst case scenario. And that's also sometimes the hard part of content creation. Things come up. I need people to help me with this, and something came up, and uh, I'm short people. So, life. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if you look at this, these are all crap tournaments. We have a 69 Gwent Mega Noob. Oh, this has nobody signed up with closed reg registration. And this one is designed to be never really filled. Starts in 60 years. So if you start hosting tournaments, even just 12 person, just casting them, uploading them onto YouTube, you can build a actual casting portfolio. Do it. Or you can even pick other comp more competitive games. But if you just want to get a hand in it, go for it. Uh, what else did I have? And also, watch that one Christo interview, especially the one Christo interview. Watch Flake's also very good. Both of them, those interviews, still getting better. You more and more used to content creation, so forgive me if I'm not the perfect interviewer yet on those, but they were fantastic times. Uh, also, casting high MMR games was really good. How did I do it? Did I cover everything? Oh, full-time income. Uh, if you want to be a Gwen creator like Bushy, especially myself, you have to sometimes make hard pivots. Sorry, guys. That's the reality of it. And content creation, I've heard it described once as kind of like, you know how you go for the jungle and vines? Sometimes you grab a vine, you go sideways. Sometimes you go backwards. Sometimes you go forward. Not like you're always going forwards. So all right now, like if we look at uh, my channel. Uh, let's go over here. Kind of not, I, I like don't want to show the income. I've decided I don't want to. Let's just do this. Uh, plain talk, John, but I'm here. So it's showing. here we go. Like, like, right now, I have the weird, like, backwards, because I'm trying to do politics, and it's really fun. I really enjoy it. The conversations we're having are really meaningful, but obviously, I can put out a crap video, like a really bad one, get 4,000, maybe 2,000 is my bare minimum. 47. <laughs> it's like, you know, sometimes consecration is a lot like swinging. You have to sometimes take a step backwards to try to get two steps forward. But I do have moments, 1.7 thousand. I've not been at this super, super long. I used to put up a, like smaller videos where I didn't really edit. These did not work. I needed to edit them. But I eventually got a couple small breaks here. This one was 781. Obviously, this is uh, smaller. And now it's starting to look more like what you're used to. With, like the picture plus a bunch of words. I don't know. It's life. It's hard. Content creation is not an easy business. It very much rewards the big winners. And doesn't reward many other people. I think the future of content creation, if you want to go big picture, is not in game. Gaming is saturated as heck. Um, if I go gaming streamer, like gaming streamers, like it's just going to be dominated uh, with a bunch of like, you're just going for the picture, right? We got people like Pokemon that you have to be able to look at. You have to look at Pokemon, your Ludwigs. Um, you have to look at Ninja, Dr. Disrespect. You have to look at them and be like, I'm going to be better than them. I'm not, but I might be able to move in, move into places that don't have much competition. Or have competition, but are very, very underexplored. Like, 
News affects everybody. Why would you not be in new, interested in news? Finance affects everyone. Why would you not be able to do that? All right, build a community around that. Healthy gamer, let's see, um, healthy gamer GG. Talking about therapy effectively, but really the emotions behind people and how they tick. Healthy gamer GG, healthy gamer GG, aka Dr. K. Almost a million subscribers now. They, they this dude just I, streams. I don't know where we got the. Whoops. Uh, streams, uh, streams, which therapy effectively. It's not really therapy. It's therapy is a little more complex. You get the idea though. It's awesome. Uh, so the future is, let me just double check. I got all my notes here. The future of content creation and streaming, in my opinion, is really bright, but you have to be in the spotlight. You have to be in the right place. I feel like this is the part where I have to thank people along the way for all their support or something like that. Uh, because at this point I'm quite confident the last people here are content creators. And so I, I guess I should shout out everybody on the behind the gamer, behind the streamer list. Because like this is, I feel like the secret part, like at this point, it's like maybe 500 of like the hardest core fans. Plus all of the individuals along the way who like was kind enough to support me along out there and stuff like that. So there's one, I guess I might as well just call it the people who I think went above and beyond in the Gwen streaming community uh, to... And like content creation community, like the more public fa figures. I feel like this is the time. There's lots of people, the mods behind the scenes that have helped me out so much. Essential members of the community. Uh, but I don't really want to necessarily... It feels weird thanking them because a number of them have also hop ship over to my new stuff. While the Gwent community even the fa the more forward-facing people are, you know, Spiro's not ever watching my content. He's just like, our relationship is Gwent. But he was kind enough on multiple occasions early on to like the raid my channel and help me get some viewers. Uh, though it's a, it not every raid obviously increases your viewer count, but yeah, whatever. It's a rating is its own complex topic. But Spiro is super nice, Bushy is super nice, Spessy's been great. Uh, Miss Lady J, not Rashid. Oh, there's so many, there's just so many. Lionheart was a treat. God, these interviews were so much fun. Crozer, Trinet, Tia. Um, Tia actually came on the show twice. She's fantastic. Uh, Trinet, that was great. McBeard, I was able to get McBeard on after he left. He left before I came here. Uh, Booza, obviously, guys, like Booza is. Yeah, many of you call him Burza, but Buza is fantastic. What a great human being. Awesome interview. Like, these interviews are awesome. I hope they do more of them. Future Briefs. Oh, my gosh. Future Briefs. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I cannot praise that man enough. Absolutely glorious human being. One Chris is fantastic. I literally just recommended his interview earlier. King Denpai. What, a, what an absolute sweetheart. Uh, just, just a fantastic human being. Watch Flake's great. Uh, Spessy, Tia, Freddy Babes. Freddy Babes? I don't even remember how I got Freddy Babes on here. I think I just messaged him. Yeah, sure. And I was like, nobody. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll come on. We talked for three hours. It was great. Um, Maybe maybe I kept him for too long. But I, I don't know. I just got in the zone. And that was a great talk. God, that was really fun. What an interesting human being at an interesting junction in his life. Oh, these interviews were sick. Mr. Hobla was my first one. Doesn't surprise me. Mr. Hobla loves... Trying crazy things. He was great. There's Spiro. There's Bushy. I can't believe Spiro's my second. Uh, because he was he's just the biggest. He's the person who's the face of Gwent right now, though. Maybe in time that'll become Spessy. Bushy. God, I have nothing but enough pra nothing but praise for all these people. Uh God, not Rashid's I don't even know if that one's public. Not Rashid's interview was wild. Uh, mostly because I think I didn't I'm not sure I put it public because I was starting to get backlash from the community on Plain Talk John Gaming from these interviews. A, a healthy reminder, by the way, that Diversifying content, people are like, no, no, I do not like the diversified content. These are get some views, but nothing compared to like even a bad g our gaming video. And it was like, no, no, we do not want in-depth interviewers looking into the hearts and souls of the content creators we like. No, we demand the 16th Salamander video. And I was like, oh my God, come on, really? Really? This content takes me so long to prepare. I have to research it. For Miss Lady J's interview, I had to read, I think, 10,000 tweets. Something disgusting. I'm not sure. It might be actually less than the amount. Miss Lady J tweets a lot, by the way. I don't know. If, and she has no other public information. So I had to, like, take, have good questions prepared for her and have a direction in the conversation. It was like, God, it, maybe it was 20,000. It was. I think I read, like, every tweet she wrote from, like, 2014 on. She tweets a lot. Good time. Really nice person. God, that was a really fun time. Looking back at this, like, man, this is one of the things I was most proud of, the content-wise. If you're at this point and you've not watched these interviews, you totally should. 100%. You should totally watch these. On. Also, top Gwent streamers share streaming secrets. You're welcome. You probably didn't know that video existed. You probably didn't. 
if you're at this part of the video and you weren't in it for the record it's Spiro, Bushy, Bessie and myself and I know at least a couple of you are still here that's right I know you guys because I too would probably sit there and say wow John's making a whole video on streaming content creation secrets and just kind of going with it I'll watch the whole thing because maybe I'll learn something yeah I know you're still here nice to see you guys glad you're here <laughs> oh man it's so much fun Anything else I have to say here? Anything else? I love that I don't have to even edit this video. Oh, man. Mm. No, I guess I don't really have much else to say. Hang in there, guys. If, you're, if you are already a content creator, hang in there. Not an easy journey. We'll all keep grinding it away together. Uh, feel free to leave comments. I'll try to respond to a couple if you want. Obviously, I'm still in the content creation business. And to be honest, I think it's the place to be. Really big macro talk. Uh, everything about the future looks like it's automation. So like in 30 years, like how many jobs, like makes me question, like how many, how many jobs are going to be left? We're trying to wipe them out as fast as possible. And we're doing a good job of it. Like we're creating jobs, but the moment automated driving comes in, like, God, we wipe out so many jobs immediately. And then when we do more food robots, how many people will lose their jobs to that? Makes you wonder, wonder a little bit. So like being in cre content creation, something that robots can't do very well. Good to me. Anyways, guys, 46 minute video. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed this. Catch you all soon. Later. Shout out to Ahmed Ali, Sudam81, McRandar, and Winston for all their generous and ongoing support on the Patreon. Thank you all so much.